We're talking with Earl Johnson of the Christmas Addicts Tea Party out of Texas. I met Earl down in Houston uh, last year, and I'm going to be meeting him again here at True to Vote coming up, I'm sure. Yes. And uh, I wanted to, to take a, a minute here to have uh, Mr. Johnson tell us about the tea party that he has founded in Texas. All right, the Christmas Addicts Tea Party is a tea party like any other tea party. It's made up of a wide cross-section of people. All Americans, all committed to God, family, the Constitution, and commerce. We have a slightly different mission, or in addition to the standard mission of any other Tea Party, in that we are chartered with bringing into the fold many of the Americans that feel they are not Americans, that feel they have nothing invested in America and no reason to support it. If we take one example, we'll take the 13 percent of the Americans that are referred to as blacks, descendants of African slaves, whatever you want to call them. And if I could be allowed to use a Texas analogy, you've got large numbers of people that have been herded off into a deep ravine, a deep canyon. They don't get the sunlight they need, and the communications with that group is actually extremely limited and controlled. Again, in Texas terminology, you got to send some cowboys out there to that ravine and bring them out of the darkness. Rope them in. Rope them in. Bring them back to the herd. They're all Americans. Don't let them stay split away. That's our charter. Yeah, and of course, I mean, that brings up the, the, the main problem that, that we face in trying to reach out to minorities mm -hmm. uh, uh, is uh, they, they start immediately with the name calling. Yeah. And have, how have you dealt with that? Have you faced it? Yes, <laughs> have I faced it? <laughs> in spades. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> you don't let other people define who you are. You stick to your principles, you look them in the eye, and you deal with them with facts. You make them look at themselves in the mirror that you hold up to their face. We have, part of our mission is to start 100 new tea parties in these difficult areas in America between now and 2012. The areas that we typically target and are asked to come into are areas that the conservative never gives like is given quarter. No, I'm saying that we attack two things. One, the education system, which is usually deplorable in these areas. Right. The fact that vouchers are never allowed is a big problem. The fact that the school systems are in deplorable shape, lack of discipline, and many other problems we could go on and on. The second area that's critical that we attack is the area of communications. There are three primary elements to the communications problem, and they can be associated with many of the black churches, who for a variety of reasons do not want things to change. We have strategies and programs we implement that allow us to work with black churches that want to work with us. The second area under communications is the black print media. Many of the black publications in the black areas are extremely disappointing. They offer unbalanced views and in many cases little or no useful information and they trade in hot buttons. Mm, stereotypes. Stereotypes, and propaganda. And, yeah. It's just disappointing. Uh, in many cases, and I won't call any names, we have offered to write conservative columns and articles to increase the audience to which their products would appear, mm -hmm. appeal. Right. In every single instance, we have been declined. <laughs> Usually, sooner or later, we're told that the local black politicians and black ministers wouldn't like it. So in those cases, we're set and we'll be publishing our own publication called the Christmas Addicts Journal, which will be targeted at these difficult areas.
the electronic media is a major problem as well. Mm -hmm. Most blacks believe everything they see on CNN. And their ministers and politicians tell them the people on Fox are a bunch of racist liars. Of course. So we have programs to deal with that. So we will come into a difficult area. And it doesn't have to be a black area. It could be a Hispanic area as long as they're Americans. Mm -hmm. It could be an Asian area. Chinese, Vietnamese, we don't care. We want people to be committed to America. We'll go in, and what would typically take them 18 to 24 months to get a Tea Party started and up and functioning, we'll get them up and politically functioning in somewhere between 90 and 120 days. In order to do this, we need a minimum of three committed people. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be all black people. Sure, sure. <laughs> Three committed people that live in a specific area. We'd love to have five. We'd love to have one of them to be a black minister or Hispanic minister. Okay? Now, with that core group that is going to be committed, not going to walk away after their local newspaper has written one or two articles and they've seen their picture in the paper, the people that are going to stick. Mm -hmm. We'll have them up and going in 90 to 120 days. We, I'm an engineering type, and I'm used to writing process control documents and very analytical personality. Over the last couple of years, I've been involved with eight different tea parties around Texas. I've watched tea parties fail, fall apart, and I've watched tea parties be very successful. We put together documents that define the best structure for a tea party to begin. We actually have job descriptions written for each one of those functions. We, within each function, we have job descriptions for the key positions. So we will be sharing that and helping a new group develop their organization. We'll help them become legal in terms of the documentation that needs to be filed with their state mm -hmm. and the federal government. 5013, 501, right. whatever, tax status and whatnot. We'll, right. we'll help them with all of that. We will help them, we'll teach them how to get the right kind of speakers. So, you needless know. to say, you're, you've got this down to an art uh, at this point. Well, we're, we think we're off and running. Good, good. good. Now, that remains the, the, the last question I would like to ask is, okay, now you've got that all set up. What has been your most satisfying success? I'll give you an example. We had a, uh, two gentlemen that were brought to our first meeting. Both of these guys were friends of a, I hate to use the term, a white guy. Okay. He had been trying to get them to go to a Tea Party meeting with him for almost a year and a half. Neither one of them would budge until they heard about the Christmas Addicts Tea Party. Okay. They came. The Tea Party meeting lasted 90 minutes. They were both ecstatic when they left. And you know what they told me? We never knew a Tea Party meeting was like this. <laughs> and I said, what did you expect? Right. A bunch of rednecks with exactly. hoods on their heads? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That, that is, so far, has been one of the most uplifting moments that I've experienced. Well, I'm fantastic. looking for many more like that. Well, very good. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, Dr. Okay. Johnson. I appreciate the time, mm -hmm. and good luck on the Christmas Addicts Tea Party. Okay. And uh, this will go up and hopefully help uh, spread the word. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right.